Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing August beauty favorites. Last month I mentioned a couple other beauty favorites other than just makeup. I feel like a lot of you really liked that, so we're gonna do that this month too. Starting off with skincare, I have three really standout products. So the first thing is the Rote Essence. I love this. This is by far the most moisturizing essence I have ever used. So I still do like to use my SK2 Patera essence. I'm very loyal to that, but I put this on as well, like in the same skincare routine. I think it pairs so nicely as a makeup prep step because it just gets all of my dry patches really disguised. My makeup goes on top of it so smooth. My skin feels noticeably moisturized for long periods of time when I wear this. I just really like it. I think it is a dry skin girl's dream. I actually haven't introduced you guys to my puppy yet. Sometimes you hear him rustling around in the background playing with his toys or barking a little bit. He wants down so I'm gonna let him go but just my baby. So on the note of moisturization, I have a lot of post acne hyperpigmentation right now. I've been using some chemical peels and just trying to help get rid of those. And one thing that's the downside of that is obviously there's visible dry patches on my skin right now. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm really leaning into it a lot lately, especially for makeup prep. It's the Make Hydroscape Revulse reverse emulsion. This is incredible. I've never used anything like this. I use it essentially as a primer, but sometimes I do pair it with other makeup primers, but this hides my dry patches unlike anything else. It's also really great if I have like an active eczema flare up, I'll like literally just push this into that dried flaky skin and it makes it so that the makeup can go over top of it without emphasizing those dry patches on my skin. The other thing I wanted to say is I've used two other emulsions in the past and they were kind of like gel moisturizer type feeling on my skin. This one's like a liquid oil moisturizer Balm. It's incredible. There's a cloud. This is the problem with filming in natural light. Okay, sun again. But honestly, the first time I used this, I wasn't anticipating to like it as much as I did because, like I said, the other emulsions I've used in the past just like don't even compare to this one in the slightest. I attribute the significant, noticeable change in my post acne hyperpigmentation to this product. It's the Lion's Pose Unspotted Acid Jelly Night Serum. Just by using this consistently for about the past three and a half, maybe four weeks verging on at this point, I have seen such an improvement and fading in those hyperpigmentation spots that I had not seen in months from other products. I had a lot of really dark acne hyperpigmentation that just like I couldn't figure out how to get rid of and I really started noticing a difference my skin tone just looks more even the texture has improved I don't have quite as many clogged pores as well and I just feel like overall my skin is not only like smoother but like the tone of it is getting so much more even now this does have 10% AHA in it so to protect the areas of my face where I'm a little bit more prone to sensitivity agitation eczema whatnot I will put some sort of a barrier around my eye area, my eyelids, and my nose. Not that I put the serum there to begin with, but just to prevent it from somehow migrating to those sensitive areas of my face. And overall, it's just done such a big difference to my skin. Like I genuinely had a couple spots on the cheek area. They were so dark and they would just not fade. And then I started using this at night and I feel like I'm all of a sudden like seeing them turn from this really dark brown to more of a light brown. And it's just helping my skin tone even out so much. I'm so happy with this, but it can kind of dry your skin out as well. So that's why I'm really reaching for those moisturizing products as well. Whether you've been watching me for as long as I've been on YouTube or the past couple years, I really have always kind of tried to take a lighter approach when it comes to base makeup. I always feel a little bit self-conscious in the more heavy like foundation and concealer that I wear. And even when I had, you know, severe acne on the lower half of, lower half of my face last year, I still felt better and less self-conscious. If you could see the makeup, you know, on top of the acne, but not like covering it behind a layer of thick foundation. So much more confidence on my part, even with the acne, if it was just 
you know, kind of filtered by a skin tint or a tinted moisturizer. And especially the older I get, the lighter coverage I'm leaning into. I'm gonna be 30 next month. So I just feel like when I wear heavy foundations, the fine lines around my eyes get emphasized. It settles into spots in my face and I just can't really pull off a super full coverage like I could in the past. So I have really been leaning into two different skin tints this month. First one I wanna share is the Hourglass Veil Skin Tint. I really like this. I think it performs much more like a very light coverage tinted moisturizer. So it's not as fluid as other skin tints you might have used in the past. And I find it to be really dry skin friendly. Again, if you have an oilier skin type, I've heard a few of you talk about how you feel like this stays a little bit tacky on your skin. I've set it with powder and I think that completely takes away that sensation on the product. But if you have a drier skin type, I really like how this doesn't kind of cling to dry patches and gives me a nice bouncy appearance. It's semi buildable. It's not fully buildable. You're not going to get like a full flawless coverage out of this. But overall, I think it just like makes my base look really nice, really healthy. I like the feeling of it. And if you've used the Hourglass Soft Focus Skin Mist, whatever you put that on top of, it kind of makes your makeup look freshly applied. And I do feel that that's the finish of the veil skin tint it looks like you have that hourglass soft focus mist all over the skin so the skin tint stays freshly applied looking which i really like because i just think it gives me more of like a bouncy appearance now i also have been really liking the fenty skin tint stick this is incredible i've never used anything like this i'm loving it so much i actually what i forgot to mention to you guys i wear the shade eight in this the hourglass veil and then in the fenty skin tint i have two shades that really work for me so hopefully this can help you out um nine which is 3d3 and then 10 which is 3d2 they both work really well for me because this is more of a skin tint stick the shades are quite flexible so so you could probably fit into more than one shade, but it blurs my skin in such a natural way. It's kind of like more of a satin soft finish and it just looks like a slightly enhanced skin, but you can definitely build this up and get some pretty impressive coverage. But I think the product really shines when it's worn, you know, light coverage because then you really get that like enhanced complexion without it looking like makeup. So obviously the more you wear of it, the more of like that foundation look you'll get. Very, very impressed with the both of these. I have always been a fiend for under eye brighteners and under eye correctors and I genuinely think that I found the best one I've ever tried. It's from NARS. It's the NARS Light Reflecting Eye Brightener. I wear the shade Night Swan. The reason I like this better than any of the other ones I've ever tried is its texture. It's really creamy and emollient so it feels nice and hydrating underneath my eyes and it doesn't have like a noticeably peachy tone to it so it visibly brightens and negates those dark shadows underneath my eye without me feeling like I need to put a concealer on top of it. So I love how on a day-to-day -day basis if I just want a little bit of brightening underneath my eye I can wear this on its own or if I want a little bit more coverage I can put a concealer on top. The tiny the tiniest bit of this goes the longest way. It looks like I have barely tapped into it, but because it's so like pigmented and so brightening, you really don't need any at all of the product. I'm not even kidding. Like obviously that's an exaggeration. You need to use some of the product, but when I tell you like you need like one tiny little dip into this and it's just gonna completely like blast those dark circles and shadows away. I mean it, like this is absolutely incredible. Going back on my, I'm turning 30, I need to tone down the dramaticness of my base makeup once in a while. I've really been leaning back into cream bronzer and cream highlight and I have broke this bad boy out again and have been using it and loving it just as much as I did when I first got it. So it's the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Sculptor in shade Intensity 1. So you have your cream bronzer and then your cream highlight. What I like about this so much is it just melts into my skin. It doesn't look too heavy, too bronzy. The product itself is really nice and balmy. So seriously, when it just hits the heat of your face, it just finds its own way. The product itself, in my opinion, does a lot of the work for you because you don't have to spend too much time blending it out. It just kind of does its own thing and 
makes your face look amazing now what I really like about the bronzer specifically is I can use it for a little bit of a contour and a little bit of definition on my skin the highlight is this gorgeous dewy glazy pearl so it just reflects back light and you really get the best of both worlds from the highlight because you get the sheen from the balm and then the pearl from the pigment in the product and what I really like to do is take a little mixture of the two of them and bring that onto the apples on my cheeks and I feel like I just get this really nice like noticeably radiant center of the face and it just kind of makes my cheeks pop. I feel like a lot of you probably know this, but RMS did come out with three new shades for fall of the Redimension Hydro Powder blushes. I am absolutely obsessed with Crystal Slipper. It is like the perfect, barely there, not blush blush to where it just like looks like you have a little bit of color on the cheeks but it's nothing apparent so that's why i like this so much i've not really been into powder blush that much in the past few months like over the summer i was really leaning into creams because i thought they just looked a little bit more natural but this formula by far is one of my favorite powder blushes ever because it never looks powdery it's got so much luminosity to the product itself that it just bounces back light off of your face and you could skip highlighter i I think I like it more than Maiden's Flush, which is like one of my top three blush shades of all time. I'd have to try them side by side, but ever since getting Crystal Slipper, I have not reached for a Maiden's Flush. This is like such a pretty nude peach, and I'm obsessed with it. How can I film when this creature is behind me being so adorable? You literally all know this about me. My favorite mascara of all time, could only use one for the rest of my life, like just the hands down best mascara i'm 100 percent sure of it there's very few makeup products that i'm like i know my favorite of all time about it's the dior show waterproof mascara it has always been the dior show waterproof mascara i am obsessed with this i like it so much more right now because i know i'll go back to the black version but the color in catwalk brown it's the same Dior Show Mascara formula that I'm obsessed with, but it's in a really great chocolatey brown, and I feel like it actually makes my brown eyes pop even more. And the fact that it's waterproof is just like the best of both worlds because I've really been loving brown mascara lately, but it's hard to find waterproof formulas that are actually like a true brown. A lot of the waterproof versions I've tried of brown, they are like black brown. So it's not what I'm going for. Like I want a true waterproof brown mascara it's like i really feel like it brings out the brown tones in my eyes a lot of people suggested using um a burgundy mascara but i can't find a burgundy waterproof one and honestly the brown is really the best in my opinion like my eyes just look more chocolatey especially in natural light like it really just like makes my eyes pop so if you have brown eyes try brown mascara because it just it makes your eyes look so amazing so i've shown this product on instagram and tiktok multiple times but not yet on my youtube channel it's the wonder skin wonder bleeding lip mask and i got it in the shade lovely this is the longest lasting lip tint i've ever tried i like to do like an overlining lip liner moment with it so you want to make sure that you like completely wipe off any foundation that you might be wearing I do a slight overline on my lips and then kind of do like an ombre effect towards the middle so that I get a little bit of an ombre tint going on. The stain literally lasts all day. You can keep putting gloss on top of it. It does not move. It does not budge. It's a really good true brown. It is so hard to find brown lip tints or like lip stains. They're always very pinky or orangey and I just... I'm not gonna wear that every day like and especially now that we're going into fall I'm like I want brown tones on my lips at all times right now right around the corner uh, brown tones that's pretty much it so I love this I cannot recommend this enough this is the shade lovely like I said I've owned another shade in the past it was like again a little bit too pinky so I gave it to my friend with blonde hair and blue eyes and it looks really good on her but it was just like very apparently pink on me so this is the shade this is so good you will not hear me stop talking about it honestly so if you see me on instagram or tiktok you're like you have already shown that a million times but it's that good let's talk about my favorite um brown tinted lips for fall because i'm loving all of these so i want to start off with the summer fridays lip balm this one's in vanilla beige this is what i'm wearing today right now with the lip tint it's just a really nice like soft 
beigey tone and you get the summer fridays lip butter balm formula with it perfect for every day i love the summer fridays lip butter balm formula so i like that this is a tinted version this one actually broke and i like this stuff so much like you know these are not um the cheapest lip product in the world but i like it that much so it like broke off at the top and now i have this like warped summer fridays lip balm all i did was i took a flat iron put it at like max heat and just melted the edges back together because there's still like half a tube of this in here so i'm not gonna get rid of it i'm gonna use it up i am absolutely loving the nars afterglow lip balm in the shade laguna it's just like a really sheer brown bronze lip tint it just to me it's like one of those flattering shades that i can wear every single day and i like it because it's got a little bit of more of a subdued sheen to it so it's not particularly glossy it just looks a little bit less apparent on the lips and it's a very uber flattering brown especially for skin tones similar to mine i am breaking these back out for fall i love these so much they're the gucci glow and care lipsticks this one in the shade lynette stone is my absolute favorite shade i am now officially working away at the last little stub of this lipstick so this will have to be repurchased in the next couple weeks it's like the perfect caramel nude that still lets your lip color peek out from behind it so it doesn't look fully opaque. They are so shiny, so beautiful. And then my other favorite shade, which is more of like a cool toned tobacco brown, so again, perfect for fall, is Peggy Taupe. I mean, I'm really wearing away at this one too because I wore these like nonstop and I'm gonna repurchase both of these shades. I like these that much. They are so pretty. These are like one of the best lipstick formulas. If you don't like a fully opaque lip, you will love these. They're semi sheer, but still have some buildable opacity to them so you can get more color from them if that's what you want. But they're not like drying or matte or make your lips look smaller. They make your lips look really nice and very juicy. This lipstick has also made its way into my everyday makeup drawer for fall. This is Chanel Rouge Coco Flash in the shade Moment. I love this. This is one of my favorite fall lip shades. It's got a lot of punchy pigment to it, so it really is a statement lip, so it looks really nice when your hair is up or you have a little bit more of a subtle makeup going on and let this kind of be the star of the show. It's a really gorgeous, deep mauve brown, so complimentary with fall wardrobe and just your fall look i just i love this i'm so excited to start using all these lip colors again now that i've spent several minutes talking to you about how excited i am to start doing fall makeup looks again and break out my favorite fall lip shades i want to put you onto a fragrance that makes me feel like it's perpetually summer and i will still be wearing this well into the winter because it genuinely makes me feel like i'm on vacation when i smell this it's the sol de janeiro rio radiance now i'm a big fan of these body mists in general but this one by far i will say wears much more like a true perfume it lasts so long on your hair and body and it has this beautiful like big white floral bouquet right when you smell it the first time and then it just is really leaning heavy into that sunscreen and like kind of soft citrus fragrance so like it's incredible very beach heavy fragrances so they're not like dolce and gabbana light blue not that type of fragrance but really like tom ford neroli portofino bobby Brown beach mac turquatic like those types of fragrances where like you actually feel like you smell like salt water and sunscreen and it's like very beachy oh you will love this i am obsessed with it and like i said longest lasting one by far moving into hair care so i recently within the past couple months started watching abby young i actually found her on tiktok but she has a youtube channel too but she is actually like studying tracheology so she knows the science behind hair care very interesting but she had posted about using a coconut oil as a pre-wash oil to put in your hair before you shampoo i have always done this in the past i will generally put a little bit on the ends of my hair before i wash it i just always felt like it would kind of create a barrier between the shampoo and the ends of my hair that i'm trying to like prolong and grow out however she did a video on using like coconut based oils and how that's actually the best at preventing the hair from like swelling and causing breakage and water damage in your hair so i first got the one from ogx it's the nourishing coconut milk well what just happened the nourishing coconut milk one um as you can see i'm really going through this i like this one but then I realized this isn't the one she recommended. The one she recommended is this one, the extra strength damage, the extra strength 
Damage Remedy Coconut Penetrating Oil. I like this one so much more. It's a little bit more lightweight, so I feel like it spreads further, and I only need a couple drops, whereas when I was using this one, I was kind of having to use a lot because it's a really thick. The first few times I started using this throughout the lengths of my hair to like use as a pre-wash, I was honestly astonished at how much better this one works than the other one because my hair felt silky and smooth. And my favorite way to do this is actually put my hair up at night and let this kind of soak in the day before wash day. And then you will be like rinsing your hair out and your hair will feel like silk. It's amazing. So I'm really hoping that by continuing to do the pre-wash hair oiling treatment, but by using like the coconut ones that it'll be better for my hair long term. Nothing wrong with like using the other oils that I had. I just, I know the coconut ones are supposed to be better. So we're gonna like do that for the next year. Now I also have been obsessed with and loving the Kerastase Chroma Absolute. Uh, this is the resurfacing high shine rinse treatment. The names on the Kerastase products are absolutely ridiculous and long. I love this. This is now my fourth bottle of this and I swear by it. So it's a rinse out water treatment. I like this better than the Davines one I had mentioned a few years ago or maybe a year ago. Davines has a product kind of similar to this. I think the Kerastase one creates noticeable more shine definitely really helps on reducing frizz and overall just like the dried bits on my hair they feel so much more smooth and my hair has this really unique kind of silky slip to it that I haven't found anything that replicates the feeling of this quite like this does so it's really great I love it um, I'm about halfway through this bottle and 100% will be repurchasing. It's made its way into my weekly hair care routine. I used to hate these types of hair products because I had never tried a three barrel, that was so loud. Um, I had never tried a three barrel waver. So this one's from Mermaid Hair and I think it creates the most like natural waves and I actually really like the way my hair looks with waves in it previously I had only used one from bedhead and that was like a little too primpy for me I don't know it kind of made my hair look shorter and I don't like the two barrel wave I really like the look of the three barrel wave so much so that I actually bought another waver it's differently shaped it's got more of like a interlocking u shape kind of like this so i'm eager to try that i haven't gotten it in the mail yet but i will give you guys an update but i like how this styles my hair really quick and it lasts a long time like i can get the style to last two three days without even having to do a touch up and i just feel like i don't know now that my hair is long i'm like really loving crimped waves but if you've tried crimpers in the past you didn't like them because you thought they were like too crimpy too on the nose of a crimp try the three barrel waver this one's from mermaid hair but i saw that bondi boost has one that's a little bit cheaper i feel like at the end of the day they're all going to be really similar this one's good highly recommend but i'll try to find some other more affordable options that aren't quite as expensive as this one that still have the same dimensions and three barrels because the three barrel waiver is the way to go. Last thing I want to talk about are my favorite press on nails. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know, I kind of go through phases. Like I'll love press ons for, you know, spurts of a time. And it's been like a favorite way to do nails for me for the past like two, three years. Like I just like the ease of doing press ons, but I have found the holy grail of all press ons, the best of the best that I've tried so far. So coming in at second place. So the second best I've tried so far, we have the Kiss bare but better line love these um these are these are the sculpted nail version and they are in the long length i cut them and shape them into more of a soft almond they are a true coffin shape and that's really not my style and i like to really cut the length down a lot as well but these are great they have a good amount of thickness to them so they feel a little bit more substantial and they don't bend as easy as other press-ons but the best of the best that I have tried so far, and it has to be this style, because it's the best in my opinion. Um, it's the Kiss Acrylic Nude Salon. Kiss Salon Acrylic French Nude. These are in the medium length. There's a couple different styles of the Kiss Acrylic Nude line, but it's this length and then this shape that I like the best because I can just cut them down and put them in an almond shape. You can buff off that top layer and put gel on top. They last two weeks 
easy no pop off by like a week and a half to two weeks I'm ready to take them off and put on a new set anyway but if you wanted to wear them longer than two weeks I think you could I just haven't tried it because I like the look of like a fresh manicure but I love the way these look on their own and just like wearing them you know obviously trimmed and shaped the way but I like the natural look of the way the nail comes in the box um, and then I also really like buffing off that top shiny layer and then putting gel on top because the white part of the French nail is really subtle so it just doesn't look as apparent and I think they are so good they're thicker than other press-ons so they actually feel really nice and durable on your hands like you don't feel like they're like bending or gonna pop off and I used to be like super into dip gel when I kind of got off my press-on phase I was doing dip gel and the nails would always shatter they would always break they would always pop off and I haven't had a single issue with these specifically so kiss salon acrylic french nude i genuinely had so much fun filming this video like the most fun i've had in a while filming a sit down favorites and i think i really do like including other types of beauty favorites not just color cosmetics so if you like this let me know because i'd love to start doing this at the end of every month including a couple other things and leave a comment down below i would love to hear back from you let me know some other videos that you want to see in the near future just anything that you are wanting to see i'm definitely going to be doing a speed reviews coming up pretty soon i love watching those where it's just like rapid fire whether you liked something or not um, and kind of giving you quick bits and bobs of information on products that i've been testing so i'll have one of those coming up soon and i'll go a little bit more in depth about skin tints that i've been using as well but anything that's like something you would like to see on the channel in the near future leave it down below and then also please be sure to come follow me on tiktok and instagram too if you aren't already because i post beauty content on there as well so i will see you in my next video thank you guys so much for watching this one bye